Welcome to the second episode of how to build AI agents the right way. A quick refresher, we're building AI agent with a chat interface, agent configuration, model configuration, and AI tools and data access, or a set of tools. This agent will be able, by the end of the series, answer questions about your own data stored in this case in a Google Sheet, but could be in any other database. A quick refresher, if you missed the first lesson and you don't know what is a token or what is a context, click the link up here, as well as one in the description, to go to the episode one and watch the introductory terms and where do we start. In today's episode, we will sign up for N10 account and we will sign up for OpenAI API key. Put it together and within the next 10 minutes or so, you will have a working agent with a chat interface and ability to provide the basic configuration. Without further ado, let's go. So why do we use NA10? NA10 is one of the leading and the most one of the most popular solutions out there that is open source, has a commercial tier to it. It can be hosted, you can self-host it. It's very popular on a GitHub. It has over 11,000 stars. It's been one of the highest ranked open source repositories for agent and AI automation. It provides a simple to understand low code, no code interface. What does it mean low code, no code? It means that you can build stuff in the pure code if you like, if that's what you're inclined to. But if you are a business user and you're looking to automate the workflow or process, you could just connect the boxes together without writing a single line of code, which is exactly what we're doing for this agent implementation. We will achieve it without a single line of code. NA10 is the open source solution. It does have a commercial tier, business tier, and a corporate tier. But for all intents and purposes, you can download the open source solution and run on your laptop for free. If you want to see how to do it, there's another link in the description that will take you to a video that I show how to dockerize it and run it locally on your laptop. For today's lesson, we will start a trial account. It requires no credit card, only an email address to sign up and you will have a 14 days to use it. If you would like, you will be able to upgrade after for about 20 bucks a month. Let's begin. Let's sign up for a new account. So how to sign up for an N8N account? It's simple. You open the website n8n.io and then in top right corner, you click get started. The first question, it will ask for your information. So my name is Vasily Nevlev. I've created a brand new email address just for this demo because I already have a working platform. I'll confirm the email address. We'll generate a strong password. And this field is going to be unique as something that will identify and that's where you will log into your platform once you've created it. If you would like to subscribe to marketing emails, you click this box and then start the free trial. It will ask you several questions to get to know what your purposes are for signing up. It just helps and they tend to understand their audience more than anything else. So I run the business. We have 20 employees. I'm an owner of the business. And this is as close as we are to probably automation agency. And I'm comfortable writing script functions. Like, okay, how did I hear about it? YouTube. And we use it for customers. There you go. You don't have to complete that one. There's a tutorial already included and start automating. And just like that, you've signed up for your personal account. This account has over 1000 executions included as a part of the NA10 trial. And that's plenty for the trial. Next step that we're going to do, we're going to create a workflow. Now workflow in NA10 means what operations you would like to connect together. I think it's important that we talk a little bit about what is a workflow and how it's different to an agent before we take any further steps. So what is a workflow? Workflow is a sequence of steps to accomplish a task. That's the first and one of the most basic definition. You see that it has nothing to do with the AI agents as such. Every single workflow has some kind of trigger. It has usually a decision one way or the other. The workflow can be automated or can be manual because we're looking at NA10. So we will be mostly focused on automated workflows. Now, Agents don't necessarily play a role. Agents allow to automate some type of decision making within a workflow. From personal experience, automating for many businesses, the many automations can be done with just the workflow. There's no AI necessarily needs to be implemented. And I'm sure you can think of many situations within your business about how something can be achieved better with just the automation without necessarily applying any kind of type of AI. So how does the workflow and AI agents, how do they differ? Well, agents 
any agents, human agents or AI agents, they know and for having some type of abilities. They have goals and preferences. They're trying to achieve something that's been asked of them. They usually have a prior knowledge. If you think about an employee in your business, any employee can be described by that. They have types of abilities, skills, you usually hire them with some type of experience, even if they're just out of university. Now the agents, they operate in the environment. In that environment, they can usually take some kind of actions, see what happens and respond to it. Now you could see how workflow and an agent are two completely different concepts. It's not either or, they can be combined. So in other words, a workflow can be heavily reliant on an agent to take steps. A workflow don't necessarily should have any AI agents. It can be done by itself. And AI agents can be implemented without any particular workflow in mind. Let's quickly have a look at the agent that we're building as a part of this mini series. You could see it's mainly AI agent implemented as a workflow. And that workflow has one trigger and an agent, if you've seen in the first episode, will take the actions by themselves to determine what tools and what abilities it needs to implement to achieve a goal. Its goal is going to be simple. It's going to be to reply to a query submitted by a user, but it will be able to decide for itself how it goes about achieving an outcome for that goal. Okay, so we're with NA10 and we're starting on our brand new workflow. As I mentioned, the workflows, first of all, they have a trigger. Because we're building an agent that will be able to interact with you by chatting with you, by listening to your question and providing an answer, we need the first trigger that will be a chat trigger. So click for add the first step. And on the right hand side, that's all the different triggers available. And we click on chat interface. In this window, we don't really need to do anything else at this point in time. We can leave it like that. And here we are. We have when the chat message arrives, that's our trigger. Our agent and the workflow will be triggered when the chat message arrives. Next step is to add an actual agent. There's various other options available. You can work on the message that arrives, check for particular terms, check for words, check where it came from. You can orchestrate the workflow any way you like it. In our case, we will put straight an agent. And here is going to be AI agent. Now the AI agent itself uh, can be configured in multiple ways. If you've seen the episode one, we already talked about the prompt and the token and what those different things mean. And in this particular interface, we can leave it as it is for now. We will talk about how to design a custom bespoke prompt in one of the next episodes. But for the time being, this is a good enough. To make this basic example work, we need to add an LLM. LLM as you already know from episode one, is a large language model, and we have multiple choices here. For our particular example, we will add OpenAI, one of the most popular LLMs on the market. If you don't have an account with OpenAI, you can sign up and claim free credits because this is a brand new account. We have no credentials, so let's go and create one. Select credential, create new credential, and it will ask for your API key. Now you might think about what is API key? API stands for application programming interface. And that's how two or more software get to talk to each other through a predefined standard. Now the that standard, the API standard is open to anyone and to know who to build for the use of the API integration, if you like. It requires an API key, which usually a random string of numbers and digits that authenticates you being you, and therefore anyone that's using that API key will be able to pretend you, which is important for security because that's where the bill is going to be generated. To create an API key, you need to log into platform openai.com and you will see a screen just like the one I'm showing you now. Press the button in the top right corner. The name of the key doesn't matter functionally, but if you have lots of keys, you should consider how you're going to organize those keys, perhaps. Uh, name them by purpose, where they're being used, or which user being issued to. In Agentic Lab, we usually use the username and when the key was issued, so it can be differentiated. I will just call it Anit and Demo, as I will delete later on. I'll put it into default project and I create secret key. Don't worry about that. You can see the key. I will delete it as soon as I finish with the session. So press copy. Done. We go back to the automation workflow, API key. Insert, press save, and it will test it straight away. And it says connection tested successfully. Don't need to save it. 
And just like that, we created a very basic AI agent in NA10. Let's test to see how it works. I can say, hello there, tell me a joke. And that's the answer. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. There you go. With this very simple uh, basic lesson, we talked about what is API, what is an A10, how that system differs to many others, and we've created a very basic count, trigger, as well as AI agent that we will start building from to be able to build the rest of the agent that I showed you in the beginning of this lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson, press the like and subscribe and keep an eye on the playlist for the further lessons as I show you how to add additional configuration, write a professional prompt, add additional tools, and have an end-to-end -end agent that can be your data analyst.